Saints Day to all of you. And once again, this is a communion Sunday, so let's go through the communion instructions real quickly again. If you take the take the cup out of your plastic bag, there's a clear cellophane wrapper on top, not the purple one, but a piece of clear cellophane that you can grab. And when you pull that back, that'll expose the hose. And then when it comes, so when it comes time to consume the hose, you pull that the rest of the way off. You consume the hose that's on the top of the cup. And then when it comes time to consume the blood of Jesus, you pull off the purple. That exposes the juice that's in there. Just so that everybody is ready for that. Also, I noticed that I, uh, Messed up the first hymn. I have printed, I have indicated we're going to sing four verses, but lo and behold, there's five verses. So it goes one, four, six, five, eight. So if you guys don't need to know that, it's, it's written, it's printed for you. Lloyd needs to know that so that he keeps up with it. Okay. All right. Today is All Saints Day, an occasion to remember all people who have redeemed by, been redeemed by Jesus throughout all the ages, especially those from our family here at Redeemer who have died in the Lord this past year. God's love is astonishing. He takes pleasure in all of his people and adorns them with the greatest gift that we could ever ask for, the gift of eternal life. In heaven. Today is a day of rejoicing. Not that we or our departed ones have been such great saints, but that our Savior has graciously numbered us among his own people. The psalmist writes these words Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of his faithful people. We now come into his presence as we meditate on our opening hymn for all the saints.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy are we when our treasures cannot be quantified. Happy are we when our knowledge is tempered by mystery. Happy are we when our pain is held in the balm of love. Happy are we when our delight comes from beyond ourselves. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for you are holy, gracious, and good, the hope of all the faithful, the power of the weak, and encourage the poor. Comfort those who mourn and fill humble hearts with gladness. Give food to the hungry, drink to the thirsty, peace to the peacemakers, mercy to the merciful, and honor to the despised. Sustain your saints in ministry until at last they see their reward, the joy of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil distortions and hatreds. Let us also confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for all his children. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
This is the word of the Lord. And a reading from John's first epistle, 1 John chapter 3. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able for the gospel reading, which is recorded in Matthew's fifth chapter, otherwise known as the Beatitudes. Now when he saw the crowds, Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Let's talk about those words that we just heard a few moments ago. In the first reading, we heard that God wipes away every tear. In the second reading, we heard that God calls us his children. And in the third reading, we hear them say, God, Jesus say, Blessed be. There are all kinds of people in this world that we see. It's kind of like a deck of cards. You got people that are hungry, people that are thirsty, people that are persecuted, people that don't know which way to go, people that are angry, people that are messed up. All that is just pretty amazing. So we have people pointing one way. We have people pointing the other way. We have people even pointing with their backs to themselves so they don't know which way they're going. That's kind of like us, isn't it? Jesus loves us and he calls us and he says, Blessed are you, for you will be called peacemakers, or you will be given mercy, or you will be given my blessing. And when Jesus comes to us and blesses us, it's kind of like this. When he blesses us, then all of a sudden, we know who we are, and we know whose we are, and everything seems to be okay. Because we know that we belong to Jesus, and his love for us will never because Jesus calls us saints. Not because of what we do, but because of what he's done for us. He loves us. So my fellow saints, know that Jesus loves you. 
know that you belong to him, know that you are bought and paid for with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue now with our hymn of the day, Just As I. Saint Teresa. 
Many people think that saints are some kinds of super Christians. That they're, well, that they're just plain better than the rest of us. But the Bible has a different way of defining the word saint. You see, in the opening reading of most all of St. Paul's letters, he addresses, addresses them to the saints. He addresses his readers as saints. So he writes to the saints in Rome. He writes to the saints in Ephesus. He writes to the saints in Thessalonica. He writes to the saints in Corinth and so on. Now the Greek word for saint uses the word holy. So Paul uses the word holy and transforms it into a noun. So instead of saying saint, he could have just as easily said holy one. So that begs the question, well, just who is holy then? And certainly, what does a holy person look like? A holy person look like Mark back there, or Amy up here, or Gerald over there, or Michael in the corner back there. What does a holy person look like? Well, the elder in that reading from Revelations today asks a very similar question. He says, who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? And he gives us the answer. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. What a beautiful picture that is. Isaiah tells us in his prophecy that all of us will become like the one who is unclean, and that all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. And now we hear and us pure and white. Jesus, who was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. By his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death, the contamination on us is removed and our sin is removed and we're made righteous in the sight of our God. Jesus' work cross of Calvary removes our briny deeds and makes them righteous, makes them pure and white and suitable for God's kingdom. So saints aren't people that make themselves holy, but rather they're people who receive holiness from God for the sake of Jesus through the gift of the Holy Spirit giving it out of faith. So does the way you become a saint sound a whole life, a lot like the way you become a Christian? Well, it should. Because all saints are Christians. All Christians are saints. Today's epistle gives us a, another word for saint. John tells us that we are children of God. Child of God. Saint. Christian. Those are all different names for those who have faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. All different names for the great multitude who will be standing around the throne of God, the throne of the Lamb in heaven. But you don't 
think you're holy enough to be a saint, you're not alone. Think about it. St. Matthew was a tax collector. St. Philip certainly didn't think Jesus could feed 5,000 men plus women and children with a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. When the rubber hit the road, St. Peter denied that he even knew Jesus. St. Thomas doubted that Jesus had risen from the dead. St. Paul called himself the chief of sinners because of what he had done. He had persecuted the church before the Holy Spirit put faith in his heart. And when St. Paul wrote to the saints in Corinth, he had to scold them for a laundry list of problems that was going on in the church. But in spite of that, when he addressed them, he called them saints. He wrote his letter to the saints in Corinth. Holy one. See, they weren't perfect. They were still holy in God's eyes through faith in Jesus. So what then is the communion of saints or the gathering? It's a gathering of holy people. It's a gathering of Christians. It's a gathering of those who believe that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. It's a community Communion, it's a tough word, communion of saints spans two different worlds. We know that. Here on earth, the communion of saints struggles with sin, struggles with life, because even though Jesus has defeated Satan, he's still here battling with us. Satan still fights us. Satan is still trying to get us to come in faith in him rather than Jesus. And we're called the church militant because we're in the middle of a battle. But we know that our warrior, Jesus, is fighting that battle for us. And then there's the other part. All of those who have completed their journey here on earth and now stand around the throne of the Lamb. The ones who have already washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They return to paradise, to the Garden of Eden, to heaven, where they're without sin, without hunger. Without misery, without tears, without death itself. Where the one called the Lamb, the Paschal Lamb, the Easter Lamb, is their shepherd, who leads them to springs of living water and wipes all the tears from their eyes. But even though the church Spans two different worlds. There are not two different churches, one here on earth and one in heaven. Rather, we believe in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. The oneness of the church isn't even destroyed by the separation of death. For where Jesus is, there are his people, there are his saints, there are his Christians here on earth, and those who are in heaven already. The church on earth and the church in heaven unite around the throne of the Lamb, the throne of God, in the presence of Jesus Christ. And when we gather around the altar today, well, we won't be gathering around the altar, we'll be staying in our pews. But when we come to receive Jesus' body and blood, not only will the be present around us, but we also know that the multitude around us will be saints. That those around you receiving Jesus' body and blood are saints. In one communion, one faith. 
So it's proper today that we praise God for men and women of faith. Men like George Stranovich, George Jones, for the call for this life this past year, and are now in the mansions of glory. Men whose love inspire us, who set a godly Christian example for us. It's appropriate that we honor the work that God has done in their lives to bring them to faith. It's appropriate that we honor the work that God has done through them that affects us as their family and friends and also the world in which we live. And it's appropriate that we honor those who have preceded us in the church triumphant. Because when we honor the redeemed, we also honor the redeemer, the saints who are holy in God's eyes, testify to the only one who is eternally holy. his blood that allows us to stand in the presence of God. It's being baptized into his death that gives us the white robe we wear as saints. And it's his word and sacraments that usher us into his eternal kingdom, the church triumphant, where we will never again suffer Christ are already saints. By his death on the cross, Jesus has clothed us with his righteousness, and through his resurrection, we have everlasting life in his presence. We, my friends, are the communion of saints. In Jesus' name. Stand as you're able. As we continue with the affirmation of faith, which is begins on the bottom of page seven. Wonderful is our God who gathers the poor of the earth. Glorious is our God who wipes away the tears of sorrow. Wonderful is our God who gives inheritance to the meek. Glorious is our God who satisfies the hunger of the just. Wonderful is our God who gives mercy to the merciful. Glorious is our God who gives vision to the pure in heart. Wonderful is our God who adopts the peacemakers. Glorious is our God who lifts high the persecuted. Wonderful is our God who finds the lost. Glorious is our God who awakens the dead. Amen. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the victory over death your Son has won for us. Today we praise you for gathering these faithful brothers into your loving arms. George Shramovich, May 22nd, 2020. 
George Jones, May 22nd, July 22nd, 2020. Loving Father, keep us in our baptism of grace that we may enjoy your heavenly blessing when our time on this earth is over. Amen. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for an increased appreciation of the communion of saints to which you have called us. Give us strength in our daily lives and faith that we may always live with the sure and certain hope of everlasting life, that we will join those who have gone before us in faith, and that our lives will be a sacrifice of praise for the salvation Jesus has won for his people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer from illness, especially George Lights, Phil Oshawa, Wayne Krieger, Ari Oliver, Eric Schumacher, and Henry Wirth, and those we name in our hearts today. May their sickness and weakness be turned to health and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for the families of our congregation and community, especially those who are celebrating birthdays in the coming week. Alex Carter, Megan Dobson, Jeff Coppage, and Ruth Ann Malone. We also lift up the Ron Jones family as they deal with losses and struggles. Knit us together as your chosen people, the body of your Son, that we might enjoy heaven and peace, you know, peace in heaven and on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we pray for the men and women of our armed forces. We also lift up our fire, police, and EMT departments, and all of our frontline medical workers who are dealing with the ravages of COVID. Keep them safe and nurture them in their grace, your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father, we pray for wisdom for the citizens of our nation as we prepare to cast ballots this week. Keep the elections free of controversy and rancor, and enable your people to unite behind our elected leaders so that all may work together for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Precious Lord, as the day of your suffering drew near, you gathered your disciples and gave them and us a precious gift. Under bread and wine, you give us your very own body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. Grant us the grace to receive these gifts rightly as we come to your table today. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we remember with thanksgiving those who loved and served you in your church on earth and now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good to see you. Please remove your elements from the plastic bag. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed with bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take these. This is my body, which is given for you. Do 
this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you, drink of it. This cup is the New Testament, and my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. This time you can remove the salt pain cover. Take and eat. This is the very body of Jesus Christ, given into death for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Printed in your worship folder, 